Patil, Professor and Head of Civil Engineering Department, Walch Institute of Technology, Solapur. So today I am going to discuss about design of counterfoot retaining wall part 3. So part 3 deals with toe slab design of counterfoot retaining wall. Learning outcomes. At the end of this session, students will be able to analyze and design the toe slab of a counterfoot retaining wall. So the example is design of counterfoot retaining wall if the height of the wall above the ground level is 5.5 meter so if the height is more than 5 meter the cantilever retaining wall is uneconomical we have to go for counterfoot retaining wall then sbc is 180 kilo newton per meter square angle of interfection is 30 degree unit weight of backfill is 18 kilo newton per cubic meter Keeping the spacing of the counterfoots as 3 meter, coefficient of friction between the soil and concrete, this is required to for the stability analysis is 0.5, adopt M20 grade concrete mix and FE415 steel. So in part 1 we have first of all proportioned the different sizes of different uh, uh, units of counterfoot retaining wall then we have carried out stability analysis of counterfoot retaining wall after stability analysis only we can go for design and in part two we have done design of stem slab now in today's session we are going to deal about design of toe slab now if you see the section now this is the stem slab and this projection so projection beyond the stem slab projection of the entire base slab beyond the this stem slab this is called as toe slab only this portion up to the stem slab it is called as toe slab and the portion of the base slab which is below the earth fill the portion of the base slab which is below the earth fill that is called as heel slab and this is a counterfoot this is a counterfoot now here since this projection is very small this projection is just 0.8 meter so therefore here we design this particular portion as a cantilever slab we design the toe slab as a cantilever slab so here it, it is not shown because it is buried under the earth here so therefore the design of toe slab is done by considering it as a cantilever slab now this is the pressure diagram this is the pressure diagram and this portion is toe slab and pressure diagram we have calculated a maximum pressure we have calculated a minimum pressure so this we have done in part one in part one during stability analysis you are supposed to find out what is the maximum pressure below the base slab what is the minimum pressure below the base slab so we have seen how to determine this pressure and how to determine maximum pressure and minimum pressure minimum pressure is p by a minus m by z and here it is p by a plus m by z so review question where will be the critical section for maximum bending moment in case of a two slab at the outer face of the stem slab at the inner face of the stem slab at the outer face of the heel slab or none of the above can you guess please what is the right option the right option is it is maximum at the outer face of the stem slab it is maximum at the outer face of the stem slab because it is a cantilever it is a cantilever from outer face of the stem slab projecting out from the stem slab therefore it is maximum here so now you have to calculate cantilever moment now this is the pressure i will just show you the figure so here you will find first i have determined what is the pressure up to this particular level in line with the face of stem slab outer face of stem slab here this is 141.7 this is 
70.5 by similar triangles we can find out what is this particular pressure so these two pressures are known then you have to find out what is the maximum bending moment at this particular location at the face outer face of the stem slab so now it is 147.7 into 0.8 square upon 2 that is the triangular pressure uh, rather udl 141.7 i have taken udl first into 0.8 into 0.8 by 2 that will give you the moment plus one half remaining triangular portion 170.5 minus 141.7 into 0.8 into two third of 0.8 because the CG lies at two third from there. So now this will give us a bending moment of 51.488 kilonewton meter. MU is 1.5 times M. So 1.5 times 51.488 you are getting MU ultimate moment as 77.232 kilonewton meter which is less than MU limit which we have already calculated in case of stem slab by 0.138 FCKBD square so it is 186.57 therefore it is MU is less than MU limit therefore the 260 thickness is sufficient from bending moment consideration. Now we have calculated area of steel. Area of steel is calculated by using equation G 1.1 B of IS 456 2000. So, MU is equal to 0.87 FY ESTD into 1 minus ESTF upon BDFCK. You can find out AST. It is 885 mm square. So, therefore, we are using 16 mm diameter bars. The spacing works out to be 227 mm. It is area of 1 bar in 2000 divided by AST required. So that works out to be 227. So let us provide a 16 mm diameter bar at 220 mm center to center. So this is the main steel. So since you get tension at bottom, this will be at the bottom face of, it is nearer to the bottom face of the toe slab because pressure is upwards so therefore tension is at bottom next we have to check the shear you have to check it for shear so critical section for a shear it is at a distance d from the face of the stem from the face of the stem it is as per is 456 2000 the pressure at this particular point we have calculated it is 26.7 plus this particular would divided by 4 into so this works out to be 126.2 kilonewton per meter square that is the pressure at that particular point considering one meter we get we have to find out the shear force so that is average of the pressures if i consider one meter it becomes kilonewton per meter into 0.8 minus 0.26 because 0.26 is your effective depth your section is at 0.26 from the face so it was thought to be 80.1 kilonewton now if i calculate vu it is which is 1.5 times v it was thought to be 120.15 and if i determine tau v tau v is nominal shear stress if i determine tau v tau v is nominal shear stress so nominal shear stress was thought to be 0.462 newton per mm square then we have to check it this should be less than tau c then only it will be safe so therefore percentage steel we have to calculate percentage reinforcement provided it is area of bar into 100 divided by this spacing into 260 we have done it is 0.352 percent we get so if we refer table number 19 of is 456 2000 so tau c is given by ks tau c dash tau c dash is taken from table 19 tau c dash is taken from table 19 we get tau c that is for the solid slab it was thought to be 0.442 which is less than tau v so since this is less than tau v then you have to provide either shear reinforcement or you have to increase the depth in order to make it safe if you don't want to provide shear reinforcement then you have to increase the depth so therefore we have increased the depth instead of 260 we have made it 300 
we have made it 300 effective depth we have made 300 for the base slab oh, then by considering 50 mm minimum cover 50 mm effective cover the overall depth will be 350 mm now if i consider overall depth 350 mm for the base slab since the additional load directly gets transferred to the soil without creating shear force and bending moment therefore pressure calculation need not be repeated once again that is the reason why we are not repeating we get d is equal to 300 tau v is now 0.4 which is less than tau c hence it is safe now this is the reinforcement arrangement now this is the toe slab and this is now it is 350 this is 350 instead of 300 and here it will get at bottom 16 mm diameter 220 center to center and the distribution steel which we provide or mesh which we provide uh, minimum steel that is 12 mm 225 center to center on both side on the top as well as at the bottom perpendicular to the 16 mm bar again same thing you will have and this should extend up to development length in the base slab the 16 mm bar should have ld length projected inside so that it will it can transfer the stress to concrete now these are the references used for this particular presentation thank you thank you one and all